EMF protection is a complete scam. Do you need to buy things in order to defend yourself against radiation that comes out of the electrical devices in your house, aka EMF? Short answer, no. Long answer, also no. Um, and if you say otherwise, I'll meet you in the fucking comments um, <laughs> because this is, this is, there's no gray area here. There's no wiggle room for you to move around in. And there's two different kinds of sellers that do this. They'll sell things like shungite and tourmaline. I've seen fluorite. I've seen amethyst. I've seen all manner of things being sold to insulate you from EMF, something that you don't need insulating from in the first place, to be quite honest with you. And there's two different kinds. There are the sellers that know for a damn fact it doesn't do anything. And there's the sellers that think that it does, but still shouldn't be selling it because this information is not hard to come by who I also have absolutely no patience for, to be quite honest with you, because if you're selling something and purveying information that makes people inherently anxious about the things that are literally in their home, then you should have had the civic responsibility to check. If you're profiting from inducing anxiety in people, the fact that you're ignorant is not an excuse. You should do better. You should have had enough civic responsibility to, to at least check. So sellers... So what is radiation, first of all, because EMF is a form of radiation. Now, when people hear radiation, they immediately go to things like Fukushima and Chernobyl and Hiroshima and Nagasaki and nuclear war and all of these things that are inherently negative and <laughs> inherently bad. Um, so radiation is a form of energy which is emitted from something. OK, uh, so it's uh, un generally an unstable isotope where it will ping off electrons or neutrons or various different things, depending on the kind of radiation. Um, but this is subdivided. So radiation is uh, subdivided into two categories. I mean, it's subdivided into loads, but for the purpose of this video, um, and to make things a little bit easier to understand, it's subdivided into two, which are important for the purpose of this video. So you've got non-ionizing radiation and you've got ionizing radiation. So what is ionizing? What does that mean? So when you've got uh, ionizing radiation, what this does is it is emitted with such energy that it can basically ping electrons off of your cell. Now, when a cell loses an electron, it's basically becoming ionized. Uh, now, this can essentially do a lot of damage to your DNA and in acute doses, which is generally around sort of four sieverts, which is the, the metric used to determine radiation is basically determined in sieverts. Um, one sievert, for example, which is still an acute exposure, um, would probably make you very, very ill. Um, you'd be violently sick. You'd feel very queasy and probably be quite violently sick. And then four would kill you. Um, and you are exposed to ionizing radiation all the time. The sun, <laughs> the sun uh, is, uh, is, is, is an ionizing form of radiation, which is why you wear suntan lotion to insulate you from that happening. Um, or obviously nuclear reactors, Chernobyl, Fukushima, nuclear war, all of these are ionizing forms of radiation. Are these things you need to be worried about? Yes, because they are inherently negative and will kill you in acute enough doses. You are exposed to it basically every day. I mean, radon, for example, which is a gas which is literally emitted from the ground. Um, this is radioactive and you are subjected to this quite regularly, to be quite honest. Um, but again, your body has the ability to actually repair radiation damage, but it just depends on the dose. So it's quite relative. Now, the other kind of radiation is things like radio waves, um, radio waves, microwaves, literally perceivable light, um, ultraviolet light to a degree. There's, there's obviously healthy amounts and then there's a threshold. Um, now, these are non-ionizing forms of radiation, meaning they don't, they're not emitted with such a force and energy that they do damage to your DNA or do da damage to your body or your cells. Now, these are the kinds of, of this is the kind of radiation which is emitted by general household appliances. So things like mobile phones, uh, televisions, Wi-Fi. Now, what sellers do is they like to pretend that radiation is monolithic, despite the fact there's absolutely loads and loads of different kinds of radiation, ultraviolet, gamma, there's uh, you know, radio, radio waves, uh, microwaves, perceivable light. There's so many things are caused by rainbows are caused by, you'd be dead without, ra without radiation. Natural lights, 
heat. These are essentially all forms of radiation in one way or another. So you're, you're, the entire world that you live in would be completely uninhabitable without radiation. So don't don't take people on their word when they describe it as if it's this inherent bad. You would be quite literally dead without it. So non-ionizing radiation is a fairly benign form of radiation, which is emitted in very negligible amounts by electrical devices in your house. Now, do you need insulating from this? No, and that is an objective truth. There's no gray area for people to wiggle around in. It's been studied extensively. Also, the things that they sell in order to insulate people from non-ionizing radiation, things like shungite and tourmaline have also been studied extensively. Don't take my word for it. Go on to Google Scholar, which is an academic filter. Look at the peer reviews. There's no gray area. They're just wrong, right? There's two different kinds of sellers that do this. So there's the ones that know for a damn fact that it's not true, but they do it anyway because they found a, an effective way of marketing it, which induces fear in people. And then they leverage this fear and this ignorance, and then they profit from it. Then there's the other kind of seller who I'm no more patient with at all, because I think people should have the civic responsibility to check that the things that they're selling are true or the things that they're saying are true, especially if they're selling something off the back end of that, off that little spiel that they're purveying. And th this is the demographic of people, sellers that don't know any better and they think it's true. And I'm no more patient with this demographic either because just because you think that something is true doesn't absolve you of the civic responsibility to actually just check because this is not hard information to come by. It would take you seconds to realize. And I've had conversations with sellers like this in the past where I'll, I will say to them, you do realize that what you're saying is completely false. It's objectively wrong. It's demonstrably incorrect. This is when I've usually got them on a one-to-one -one basis, and it won't take me long to prove that what they've been saying is incorrect. And then I tend to ask them, this is quite provocative, but I do it because I'm, I want to make a point, because I would like to make the industry better for things like this. I say, okay, are you going to, because what you've done is you've essentially profited from inducing anxiety in people, not just anxiety, but you've made people anxious about things that are literally littered around their house. You've made people anxious about being in their own homes and then you've profited from that. So you're going to at least, at the very least, ring these people and say, sorry, <laughs> you, you can chill out because everything I said was just complete bollocks. Or in the best case scenario, are you going to offer them a refund? Not once. If I had someone say yes, funny that.